at John Bosco College of Engineering. Mr. Sur was the executive member at Government Polytechnic Panjim Incubator and also served as the member secretary at the Virtual Innovation Registry. What has happened is that, uh, so he identified this, that whenever there are close calls for the announcement for something, it is difficult for uh, the on-field umpires to give a decision. Do you all agree with me? If you agree with me, please type yes in the chat. Is it easy or is it difficult for on-field umpires to give a decision? Why do you think why it is difficult for the on-field umpires to give a decision? So what do you think? Why is it difficult? Let's fairly need to re uh, review more closely. Yes, we know we have. They have to review more closely. So what happens when they are not able to give a decision? What do they do? They have to take some decision, right? The only umpires. Can anybody tell us what do they do? Come on, guys. Do you even watch cricket? It's it's very easy. What do they do? The so on-field umpires have to ask the third umpire and they make a signal, right, for the third umpire. Yes. So now when the decision goes to the third umpire, what does the third umpire do? Is, is, uh, is he going to go on the field or he's going to do something sitting in his uh, nice AC cabin? Yes, Wally, right answer. Camera footage here. Do you all agree with me? Yes. So now what happens, whenever there is a close call, there is always a benefit of doubt. So then, because of the benefit of doubt, always the decision will go in favor of the batsman and it will be declared not out. So now you tell me one thing. So why do you put LED, LED lights to the stumps? What can be the reason? He identified the problem. The problem is that it is difficult for the on-field umpire to give a decision. He came up with a solution. He, he was like, I'm going to put LED lights to the sum. So every time the circuit will break, this, the bales will be dispersed on both ends. My LED stumps will start blinking so that it gives a signal to the umpire. And this is when the bales were dislodged. So what do you think? Why LED lights? Okay. But whenever there is a, a, a edge, what is referred or whenever there is an LBW decision to be taken, the third umpire will always look for Sneeko. That is, it will look for a right. Right? Do you agree with me? If you all agree with me, please type yes. If not, you can you you, you can tell your head of okay, nice, good. So now why do you think why do they not use the ultra edge for the sums as well? Why then finally sums? What can be the reason? I mean, if you can solve this problem now, you can solve any problem. What do you think? Why? Why is the question? Why even for LED light? Okay, you can put your answers in the chat or you can unmute yourself. It's just totally free to interact in this chat. Okay. So, Salman says that to reduce the time and dependency taken by the third umpire for taking quick decision. Yes, Salman, that's very much the right answer, but why? Why the technology? What do you think? Why you introduce a new technology? Let's go back error, save time, accuracy. So, so all these answers that are in the chat, they are all right answers, but they are benefits of putting LED lights. But what can be the, the question that is why LED lights? What do you feel? Yes, Salman, you are a quick decision by the page, but why? What is the scientific principle behind it? I give you 10 seconds to think about it, and if you're not able to answer, I'll uh, an answer. Okay, Sheldon says they may not have to consult the umpire every time. Sonia's easy deten detection based on light. Yes, Sonia, that is very much the right answer. Okay. Uh, the time's up, guys. So uh, we all have learned this concept where uh, every time it thunders, we always see two factors. First factor is the lightning and second is the sound. What works faster? This is easy. 
yes only light travels faster than sound so the same principle has been used in this specific technology that is light travels faster than sound that's why they are led light and they are not looking for ultra h where the sound wave will not change now the most interesting part is that this gentleman he did not he not only made uh, invented this uh, innovation but he also patented it so the more he patented this innovation what has happened is that do you all know what is what patents if you know please put yes in the chat <clears throat> do you know what are patents or should i uh, speak more about patents okay okay nice nice to know that everyone is aware about patents so once you patented this specific technology that is built by nobody in this world can copy it so getting it if anybody copies it or tries to duplicate it he can be sued in the court do you all know about this so this is what happened once he, he identified the problem he came up with a solution he built a proof of concept and then the same proof of concept was patented so now talking to the main agenda so it is how how has he commercialized this idea okay so now what he did is that he didn't sell this technology to anybody he kept the idea he worked on it and he came up with a commercial model of giving it on dvds you have rented cars right rented bikes so
meet new knowledge and put your idea over here and this are the list benefits that you're going to get first is we are going to help you file a patent like how uh, this Yeah, over there. Like you can see over there, this is the website of the Mission Council. Go ask the Mission Council dot com, and you have to click on the VIR, and the virtual innovation register will be will open for you. Uh, is everybody understanding what I'm trying to uh, explain? Or oh, I'm going too fast? Please put your answers in the chat. Okay. No questions. <clears throat> so next, I would like to show you a video of the prototyping lab. Okay. Well, the twelfth alphabet at this alphabet twelfth year, and what you get is a transformation to become ideal. We first have to see how it looks, and that's where the rapid prototyping lab comes into picture. Welcome to the prototyping lab of the Goa State Innovation Council, which is established at the Don Co College of Engineering. The Goa State Innovation Council has established this uh, prototyping development laboratory in 2019. And this basically is a stage after the ideation process where any young innovator can come. Our mission as a prototyping lab is to support students, startups, and entrepreneurs with the necessary prototyping support that has to provide it to them in converting the ideas into scalable products. When I didn't know how to do the prototyping of the, the product, the robots, I had no means over here, but when I got interested to GSI and and they told me that they have their prototyping lab and they have their laser cutting machines and the 3D printers. So, you know, I could do a lot of my prototyping work away and then come up with the final project. And uh, now, now almost a 20% work of my robot or uh, the robotic structure is what I do here in the GSINC lab. The lab is equipped with latest tools and technology. It allows the innovators to go around with their ideas until they can get to the point of idealization. In addition, the Innovation Council has schemes. They, they will give you a grant for prototyping development. They can give you a grant for telling for IPR. My name is Parul Kishnakumar. I'm the founder of Eleven Athletic Services. We are a drone as a service company and we provide drone services to farmers. Prototyping Lab helped us with a prototyping grant through which we were able to uh, apply for the software systems which were used to develop the product design itself. The benefits of the prototyping lab are building the product design tools, saving cost and time, customization, and reducing design costs. My name is Devaki Doki, and uh, we are working on a startup called Drone Line. It's basically a combination of two things. It's a drone and a missile. We were trying to make it at our home, it was not possible. 
so then we use this equipment and the materials they provided that is honestly we we got the idea again and that gave us a confidence that we can go ahead with the product because uh, after coming out of the engineering giving our whole year in this then if you don't get results that become frustrating and it's like we have to drop it and we have to go into uh, again a job so but then when we came across here that was the part that changed everything the total number of visitors at the professing lab are more than 4 out of which 80% are students from schools and colleges and the rest of 15% are startups innovators research faculty and other people we have a virtual invitation center where we expect all the young innovators to file and load ideas once it is there on our vir it also logs in that the idea began at that point on that day so you have rights to an ipr i think we should use this we don't have idea this is lab see what is happening see what can be the place meet the staff you know they come to meet the staff of fire who I'm sure will motivate you and guide you to eventually succeed and come out with a good product that is not only good for goa but good for the entire world i wish you all all the best in this step that you take So that was the video of the prototyping that is established at the Don Bosco College of Engineering. So this uh, facility is provided for young innovators like you all, students and uh, faculty from the colleges to come and uh, undergo certain workshops which are going to teach you about three D printing, laser cutting, how to build a drone, how to build a robot, how to build uh, various. Uh, I will devise it. Then we also will be our tools and sensor tools that are available for you to come to come and use in the prototyping lab. You can we also uh, request uh, some of the students to do. And we have a very active Instagram account. Okay, where uh, where we have all these competitions. Like uh, you have to get what is being printed, or you have to answer certain question. Like a uh, few days back, we had a competition. Where we were printing a uh, cut the uh, from Pokemon, uh, okay, which is a Pokemon, and uh, around seventeen people guessed it or uh, answered it, right? and then all those seventeen people were sent a uh, customized Pokemon experience to them, okay, all and all this information put on Instagram. So right now we are having a competition where uh, you do Marvel characters, okay. huh? Avengers. Do you know that? So we having a competition where you have to guess what Marvel Marvel character or Avenger we are printing, and uh, that is how uh, uh, you uh, we are engaging with a crowd, and we have a very good strong community also uh, where whatever new uh, video or whatever documentaries we are doing or whatever. Uh, coming to the scheme part, so first we have a scheme where we give a photo. Uh, when we give you a provisional patent uh, uh, grant of rupees ten thousand, so uh, uh, how many of you are aware? But if you are going to file a patent, so there is a provisional patent we can file. Do you are you aware about it? Provisional patent. If you are yet, if you are aware, then would please put yes in the chat. Okay, so provisional patents are basically provisional. Uh, uh, doing of your invention, and you are asking the Indian Patent Office to block invention and give you time so that you can file final patent. Okay, so here you know what happens is that uh, the the uh, the Innovation Council will give you a grant of ten thousand rupees, and you have to file your provisional patent on this list of internal patent agents and attorneys by the council. Okay, the amount is subsidized. The cost starts from around twelve to fifteen k per provisional patent, whereas if you go in the market, it will cost you around thirty five k onwards. And once you find the provisional patent, you have time for one to one and a half years so that you can complete your final patent. This scheme was launched so that it benefits the students because of your uh, academic curriculum or your other personal commitments. Okay. Uh, 
the next scheme is where we give a grant of 20000 rupees to fund uh, to build your prototype so now for example any of your students are working on an academic project or a project which will go at the state level or a college or maybe a college level level or international level competition your national level competitions where you need funds to build a hardware based project or innovative project you can utilize this money to build that project okay grant in aid of 20000 will be provided to you where this money you don't have to return it to the government this is your money you can utilize it as an individual you can also apply you do not need to take permission from your college from your company or from any of your group members to apply for this grant you can use this money to build your personal projects as well any doubt so far these two schemes if you have doubts, please unmute yourself because it's very important that these are the schemes and made available for you students and you have to think of maximum benefit out of their schemes. Is there any questions over here? Does anybody have any question over here? If you don't have a question, you can let no and no and we'll heard. If you have a question, you please put a question forward. It's very important to understand all these things because later, if you tell, tell us that you are from the Rosary College and you want some information about this scheme, please, we'll, we, it will be a tedious process for us to explain it again to you. So it is better that you ask the questions right now okay? because your question might not might uh, not be important for the for you. It might be important. Okay. So all uh, till date we have given provisional patent. Uh, done seven people out of which five are already uh, filing uh, final patent and two are still in the provisional patent stage. Now, uh, these are old numbers around 57, uh, 54, uh, 55 uh, prototyping grants we have given so far. Okay. These are the list of some of the prototypes that are built at the prototyping lab and totally mentored and supported by the Goa State Innovation Council. Okay. Uh, so we have crossed around 57 products, but these are some of the best ones that we are supporting. Okay, you can see that uh, this is a drone which is being uh, built at the lab, and we also have an atmospheric water generator. So this atmospheric water generator is a project done by the final year students from the Donbas College of Engineering, where uh, area, humid areas like the state of Goa, where the humidity is very high, you can take this and keep it in any open area and you can and the machine will start generating water for you it, it won't be mineral water to drink but this water can be utilized for other purposes like uh, water in the field or any other uh, agricultural based activity next is you can see that we also built a drone a very small drone uh, in in the land everything was predicted and done locally uh, we also have a patent for, uh, uh, for a cake making and a, a cake making and baking uh, process that is using a 3D printer. Uh, we are the first world to come up with this invention, which you can see over here. Okay. Any of you are in baking? Okay, so next we also have a whole board, which you can see over here. So uh, the story behind the scope part is that uh, so uh, whenever there are local matches happening, whenever the local match is happening, uh, it is difficult. It is uh, it is difficult to keep an up the score, right? So we have come up with this scoreboard where uh, uh, it, it was locally made using a laser cutting machine where uh, uh, we have just put enough stickers on it and every time there are matches happening maybe there is a practice matches or uh, one of the matches we will have the scoreboard so that they can take it with them and use it you can build the scoreboard in less than 1000 rupees whereas if you go in the market you can use it on amazon you will find very small scoreboards which are costing more than four to five thousand rupees so yes uh, cost reduction is also innovation uh, for you all and then we also got a patent for this specific mask which you can see. This is completely 3D printed uh, face mask. It was built during the COVID times. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Till now? 
If you do not have questions, you can type no in the chat, or else if you have the question, you put a question. Uh, now the next uh, part of the session will be where, is where I'm going to tell you about what all work we have done and how we supported the local market, converting the ideas into business models. Okay, so I'm going to play another video. Okay. Uh, is there anybody in the uh, in the session who doesn't understand company? Everybody understands company over there. The video is in company. Okay. If you're not able to get a video, do let me know okay. right now so that I can explain you the video once the video is over. Is there anybody over there who doesn't understand or speak company? Okay, uh, okay, we have a question. What is the time period between filing of provisional patent and filing of patent? Okay, provisional patent is a temporary process of filing patent where Indian patent office will not ask you for uh, data, will not ask you for proof of concept. Simply on basis of the concept note and the abstract, they will allow you permission to uh, get a provisional patent. So, provisional patent will take not more than uh, one to three weeks, depending upon how how the who's drafting it and does it meet all the requirements that is all the Indian patent office because they have certain templates in which you have to put your claims and then abstract and title and and, and you have to show your working also. Uh, filing of patent is a long and a tedious process and expensive process because what happens you know uh, the step one that is paragraph search you have to search the uh, search the patent database to see if similar patents are existing in the world or not. So here what happens, you have to go through a third process and prior art search, a good prior art search will take not nothing less than one to three months. Okay, and once you get a good prior art search, the, the patent agent and or the attorney will tell you what are, are the possibilities in patent that you can find. Sometimes it happens that you will, you might think about that this is what I'm going to patent, but you never know that your invention Patent will have few patents that you can apply. So that is why it is very important that you have a good patent agent and an attorney. Okay. So the final patent will usually take time between uh, uh, around like three to five years, depending upon uh, how do you file your claims, how the uh, and, uh, how do they access your patent, and then how how quick you are in replying back to their queries and you will, and then once all that is done, so then they will show a, a, a confirmation that okay, your patent has been granted. So once the patent has been granted, then it is published, saying that it is being granted to you. So it will take time between two to five years of the process. Okay. Hope uh, you know, I answered your question. Okay, thank you. So I'll quickly play the, uh, the next video. Enjoy it. Yeah, so I'll play the video first and then I'm going to explain that the story behind the it. innovation <laughs> I'm 
Okay, so that was uh, uh, the story of the between Katab. Uh, just uh, give me a second. I'll show you uh, the product, how it looks now. Please uh, give me a second. I'll quickly open it. Okay, sorry, I can't uh, find the pictures. Never mind. Uh, in the screen back on. As you in the chat, you can see that I shared uh, the link of our uh, uh, Instagram account. Okay. So once you open uh, Instagram, you see a lot of success stories happening over here. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to take you to the middle section where uh, uh, the first video that you see over here. So, usually, what happens at Protection Lab is that whenever we allow, or uh, whenever we invite, we allow students to come to uh, one day workshop at the lab. So, they are engaged on building a report. So, the first half, we usually have the link uh, process that we'll teach you about. Uh, Basics of 3D printing, how to use different uh, basics of IoT, robotics, coding, uh, soldering, programming, and then during the second half, the the whatever you have uh, built uh, in the first half is assembled with the participants, and this is a bipedal robot. 
is built by the students. And this robot can walk, dance, sing, moonwalk. It can also follow a certain path. It can crawl. So the, a lot of applications are there. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, uh, we at the Innovation Council, we give this robot back to the school and the college so that when they go back to their respective uh, institution, they can uh, motivate other students, they can uh, show to their friends, they, uh, they can uh, read on display. And we encourage all the students to break it, not to go and keep it in a showcase. Uh, even if you break it, that's absolutely fine because then we can always repair it and give it back to them. So as you can see that a lot of uh, things are put on our Instagram page. This is where uh, we showcase most of most uh, uh, mentions. Like this is about that competition that I was telling you about the Marvel character. So this is for the competition. It was, it was about uh, the hammer that is Thor's hammer. And then, uh, if I take you to the post section, uh, a lot of events are mentioned over here. This was about that uh, all the competition that we did, and uh, the people, the the ones who won the award, ones who guessed uh, that uh, Pikachu was being printed. So we invited them to our prototype team and we handed over this uh, Pikachu to them. Okay, and people outside, we sent it by to them so that uh, they can. Uh, receive uh, the award. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, it's all about a, a fun way of learning for us at the Innovation Council. Uh, you, can open this, uh, you can open this Instagram page. It's an awesome number for you all to uh, follow uh, us on Instagram. So that's how we are going to uh, keep you engaged. And whenever we have such innovative or a fun-based learning experiences, uh, we can always uh, send you along with us. So that you can also participate, and all these facilities are provided to you uh, free of uh, charges. We do not charge anything. You are in fact encouraged to come and do the lab as you can. Only if you are doing certain work, we we request you to get the filaments. So or uh, or we give you access to the filaments or material that is available with us. Only that cost is taken care. Okay, and uh, I'm also uh, very proud to share that uh, the virtual innovation register built by the uh, Goa State Innovation Council, the government of Goa, was featured in an e-copy table book uh, that is on select priority programs from uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of India. Okay, So every year we have a prestigious Prime Minister Award, which is given to the best innovations in the country. And the virtual innovation register was featured in, the, in that top 10 list proud for the state of Goa because we are the only people to receive this award so far and out of 868 applications in the category of innovations, we, we are the only one uh, in that list to be featured in the e-coffee table book. Okay. So it was, uh, uh, the e-coffee book table was released by the Honorable Prime Minister and we handed over a copy of the e-coffee table book to the Honorable Minister for Science and Technology, as you can see in this image. Okay. And then we also have a lot of uh, uh, events, photos put up over here, and we had a lot of uh, uh, invitees, guests who had visited the prototyping lab. Okay. And also, uh, before we end this session, I would like to uh, talk about uh, a very uh, useful uh, initiative. That is of the innovation test. If you go to the website, you see this innovation test, which is put over here. So, what is an innovation test? Innovation test uh, is a tool which will help you to identify your core competencies, which are required for an innovator to sell. So, you for people who are looking to put put a business or you are looking to join a company job so it is important that you understand your skills that you possess it and what skills you need to learn so we have a set of nine core competencies with us uh, those nine core competencies will tell you about uh, your aptitude and your innovation test. and the algorithm is designed in such a way that the test will give you a score 
innovative you are, what is your average score compared to your colleague or compared to other people in your group. Okay. And also, uh, in the end, we also have innovation library where the library will give you access to free course materials which you can refer and you can do a set of uh, learning uh, uh, course which uh, which will uh, I mean, which uh, which is available free. So we are trying to link those cell courses. So here, the, the, what happens is that algorithm will identify your strength and your weaknesses and your improvement areas. Wherever your improvement areas are there, it will give you links to all the free courses that are available online so that you can take them and easily take the test. To take the test, you have to click on the innovation test button, which is mentioned on the website of the innovation council. Okay, do we have any questions or we are good? Any questions for me? Please feel free to ask me questions. Any questions? Okay, let me ask you a question. Uh, any of you would like to come and uh, with the prototyping lab at John Bosco College. So uh, before we wind up the session, I would uh, like to complete the story of Mr. Bipin. So uh, Mr. Bipin, uh, he is a 10th uh, class uh, to his edu education qualification and his wife works, also works in a company. He works, uh, he stay, he is, uh, Residing in an area of Katoda Industrial Estate, uh, where most of the industries are established over there. So, uh, he, he has two kids one is elder son and the younger daughter. The younger daughter is totally disabled and she cannot move forward. She can only speak certain words that to speak sentences. So, uh, one thing he realized that while his wife was at work or was sick, it was difficult uh, for his wife to help the child eat food and then he uh, identified this problem and then he tried to do the research uh, whether I can build a robot, I can buy a robot. So he did the research and he found robots are available in the market but they are very expensive. Like, I mean, like, a person who earns a three and a half lakh rupees a year, do you think it is easy for that person to buy a robot which is costing around three to four lakhs? No, right? So uh, he did he ideated he whatever resources were available to him like for example uh, the model from the pen or scope cases or some ring or some light connection such like he and then he took a second uh, uh, laptop from my legs and then he brought all this software and then he built some CAD diagrams and then he came up with that design. So when the innovation council met him, so we realized that uh, it was a very potent idea because it solves not only a problem, but it has some sentimental value for that person. And he's very attached to it because of his own daughter. And then we invited him to providing that we give him access to 20,000 pages of grant. And once the grant was given to him, uh, we realized that, okay, it's a time to commercially take it in the market. We took it in the market. He has also sold two similar, uh, uh, similar uh, picks to two uh, ladies from Maharashtra. Uh, I'm the ruler area. And then we also have customers in such a way that you can have the same robot at six feet and one you can have the same robot at two feet as well. Okay, so that's the story of what Mr. Bipin. And uh, I think I can. Uh, we are not saying that how can one use 3D printer as an idea. So 3D printer is not for validating an idea, 3D printer is a tool which you can use to, to convert the idea into a proof of concept. And that proof of concept can be used to validate an idea. 3D printing, laser cutting, all these are tools for prototyping. For validating an idea, you have uh, business models like business model or product development cycle. All of the business models are there which will help you to validate an idea. Ideally, uh, when you register an idea on the VIR, so we do a product search Okay, we look for potential patents right before we interact with you. And we also look for business opportunity. We have a company on the BIA 
they are going to go through an idea in the the not the best ones but the uh, innovative and the interested ones are called upon for an to one personal interview where we understand the requirement and then what scope the project has and then we look to put him in the uh, uh, idea to prototype stage where we the test we are going to build help him build to perform it we do not uh, reject any ideas we even uh, whoever is given the interview for prototyping can't open a better zero ideas have been rejected by you know something they are always the ideas that doesn't meet the requirement they are always asked to come back and uh, come up with a uh, certain parameters like innovative portion uh, scalability factor technological uh, use of the technology or uh, novelty in the technology so uh, do we have any other question yes we are open for questions right now and, and also if you have any to can we go to our instagram page just check what about we what we have done and also if you don't know my idea we expect you to uh, interact with us through our website i'm protecting there for the dir mm -hmm. so, so, so uh, come in here we can discuss we can also help you we of uh, people who are working on certain projects so you can mind them okay and all the success stories of my youtube channel so if the link is provided by me in the chat or uh, if, if you click the link you'll see a lot of documentaries a lot of sessions a lot of programs a lot of prototyping work that has been done a lot of parents set up side over there uh nishka i, I feel there are more yeah, questions yeah i think there is dr sangeet who wants to ask a question okay uh okay dr please unmute yourself uh, to ask a question I can see that just put a message in the chat, but it doesn't look like a question. It looks like an introduction that I am talking about. Uh, Doctor Sanjay. Okay, we have one question. Any type of training you can suggest for students to take a step towards thinking out of the box, which are other. Uh, yes. Uh, step number one will be to get connected with the National Council. to follow us on our social media that's where we are going to launch and uh, advertise all our programs step number 2 will be if possible come and meet us at the office our secretary is put up at the dorm of the college of engineering patna uh, this is a uh, uh, south goa office our main office in tanje step number 3 will be to attend our programs to uh, understand and then we have certain transfer technology programs where we also mentor you we guide you Not necessarily that you have an idea and then only you come and meet us. Even if some any of your siblings or family or relatives have, they need the support. You can always introduce us to them, and then we can support them. Maybe the brand ambassadors for the knowledge transfer mind. Okay, Rima has a question. What if one has an idea but not the domain? Okay, the domain knowledge uh, will be provided by uh, in form of mentor. Okay, uh, we have uh, a process where we break down your uh, idea into technology different levels. We are doing that, and each level we have mentors specific to the specialization of domains. Uh, you need somebody who need to do coding. We have certain community of students or startup tech heads. But they are going to help you code, and whatever courses are, are through it, it, everything will be covered by innovation for you. Okay, we have one question: is what is the importance of design thinking and innovation? Okay, so let us uh, take this uh, as a process. So, what do you understand by design thinking? So design thinking is nothing but making uh, your product simple. Okay, that is why you have this. So now, why are Apple products sold better than other products? That is because a lot of design elements are put into that. A lot of uh, aesthetics are put into that. So design thinking is a big is a big process. You have to first come up with a a a like more like story, but you have to come up with a unique way of the presentation. Like for example. Uh, if you look at apple uh, pie or sticks they always send this round button right apple phones iphones 
that was a patent, design patent filed by the Apple, and nobody could copy it. Okay, but once Apple they realized, okay, this is it is getting old, and other people are making a square uh, button. Like the Samsung, they came up with a square button. Uh, though they didn't copy from Apple, but they come up with a square button. Okay, uh, Apple was actually the first one to introduce that touch-based uh, round button for the iPod. So that was a design innovation. So design can also be looked at as a unique, unique uh, feature of your product. And uh, and when you file for patent, so there are three types of patents that you file, and one of those patents uh, are in design uh, patents. Second is utility, and third is plant based patents. Any other questions? So, so I hope this session was uh, knowledge is getting a alias. Okay, is getting a provisional patents uh, and like getting a alias priority date. Uh, provisional patents is totally different than getting alias priority. Alias priority date is usually for final patent where you have to pay a certain fee uh, to the patent office and ask for an early priority date. Okay. Provisional patents are basically you are temporarily blocking the patent so that you need time to file for your final patent. And these are two different things. Provisional patent, uh, I mean, uh, to make it more easier, uh, okay, uh, this is my understanding. So when you uh, when you pass your 12, the, uh, the education department will give you provisional pass certificate which you can take to a college and you can apply for admissions. Okay, so similarly, Indian Patent Office will give a provisional patent saying that okay, this person is working this invention. Please do not copy it because we are giving him time to complete his final patent. But it is also easy to file a provisional patent because you are telling the whole world that okay, you are working on this specific idea. And if you are not able to complete it between 15, do you think colleges should have prototyping lab? Uh, I mean, uh, I, how do I ask this question? Uh, maybe uh, uh, once you visit uh, the prototyping lab of the government, which is put at Don Bosco College, then you can, uh, then you yourself can uh, answer this question whether you need a prototyping lab. Yes, you know, we conduct a lot of competitions, few are state level competitions, few are college level competitions, and few are competition for getting uh, the grant. Yes, we are, we conduct a, a lot of programs, a lot of competitions. Uh, we conduct idea hackathons, hackathons on various domains, healthcare, uh, solid waste management, technology. Uh, so, uh, I mean, all that information is put uh, forward to our social media. So that is why it is very important that you are connected to us on the social media. We have any other questions? Yeah, any more questions coming? Yes, I will do that. I have mentioned uh, the email ID and the contact number in the chat. Feel free to contact us. In our uh, office, our secretary is established at the Don Bosco College of Engineering, Pakta. So, uh, do we have any other question? Do we have any other questions from any of our participants? Mr. Dr. Sanjay, would you like to ask some questions?
And if you have any more questions, we can uh, end up the session. Thank you. Okay. So with this, we end our session for today. And I thank Mr. Sudeep for all your insightful knowledge and your engaging session. And I am sure this will be of great help for all the participants. I thank you once again, uh, Mr. Sudeep, uh, for your time. And uh, we shall end with the session now. And we will begin with the next session in another five minutes. So I request the participants to take a five minute break and then we begin with the next session. Thank you. Thank you so much. requesting the participants not to log out of the session because we are going to start the next session in another five minutes. A kind request to the participants not to log out of the session as we are going to start the session in another five minutes. Kindly note that we are be, we are will be sharing the feedback form of the first session. So kindly fill in your feedback.
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Visible and audible. Yes. May I start, ma'am? Uh, so I'll give a short introduction. So let yeah. us start with uh, welcoming everybody. So we shall now start with the second impact lecture session for today. And I welcome all the participants back into the session. To deliver this session, we have amongst us Mr. Tejas Joseph, who spearheaded Lab 32, largest incubation program at T Hub, Hyderabad. Lab 32, first batch alone, generated 1 plus billion INR funding, 2,000 plus jobs, and supported 70 startups during this program. As the incubation lead, he has successfully impacted over 500 startups so far. At the age of 21 itself, Mr. Tejas started his venture 
Tech Jiva hardware startup, one of the top five companies selected by Kerala government during the Young Entrepreneur Summit in 2014. His understanding of the startup ecosystems come from, comes from his experience as a founder for five years. He has advised and worked with some of the foremost organizations across India and trained over 5,000 students with marker culture mindset before joining T-Hub. Mr. Tejas worked as the principal consultant for a college under Kerala Technical University and launched his first startup library in 2016 in Kerala. Mr. Tejas also consults to set up two more incubators at IIT, IIT Hyderabad in chip design and, autom and autonomous navigation technology. Currently, he is the chief operating officer for Fire Goa. Now, what's Fire? Fire stands for Forum for Innovation, Incubation, Research, and Entrepreneurship. It is a technology business incubator, catalyzing, accelerating innovation for fostering entrepreneurship. It's operating at Don Bosco College or in Goa, and Fire basically simplifies startup innovation. We extend a warm welcome to our keynote speaker of the session, Mr. Tejas Joseph. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for kindly session. note that this session will conclude before 1 p.m. Also note feedback form of the session will be given to you at the end of the session. I request Mr. Tejas Joseph to kindly take over the session. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, thanks for the management of Rosalie College of Commerce and Arts uh, for, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, incubation and you know how to incubate a startup. Uh, like I'm experiencing some issue with you know sharing my PPT. I was trying for some uh, technical issue, but let me fix that. Uh, but meanwhile. Uh, See, the idea of this conversation is basically trying to understand uh, which are the methods to get into an incubator, right? Uh, so I break this whole uh, discussion into three parts. One is basically we're talking about what is pre-incubation and uh, one is like what is incubation and third thing, um, being a student or, you know, being a um, going to graduate, how entrepreneurship can be, uh, you know, one of uh, what you call uh, one of your career options, and uh, my pitch uh, to students like uh, why this can be a good career option for you all. Uh, give me a second for some reason, uh, ma'am. Uh, give me a second. Let me uh, join, rejoin once more. I'm sorry for that, but uh, for some reason. Um, these buttons are not working for me. Give me a second.
I've got uh, Ramakrishna. Access is granted. Please check. Uh, Ma'am, uh, is it possible for you to see this now? Yes, sir. The presentation is visible now. Yes. So, uh, I think I would. I think I can uh, do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, extremely sorry for the uh, technical glitch going on. Um, no problem. Even if you look prepared for all those things, uh, uh, you know, things will happen. So. Um, I will make it real quick uh, in the sense uh, we'll be only discussing two things. What I expect uh, you guys to understand at the end of this conversation is like uh, uh, when you come think of an incubator or uh, when you actually, you know, uh, tr uh, trying to come up with an idea, uh, what all things you should uh, look for basically, right? Uh, what all things um, you should be aware of. Because every single person on earth um, got a billion dollar idea. You ask any random person, they will come up with uh, uh, one thing or uh, other. Everyone got a solution. Everyone got a um, better, uh, you know, uh, idea compared to the existing no, ones. Problematic, sir, you also. Sorry. Okay. So um, basically, uh, when so the question is like. No, it's not about not having an idea, right? The thing is that who's going to work on it? It's all about execution. Like it's all about um, who's going to take action uh, with an idea. Mm -hmm. So this is the premise, this is the context. So assuming um, all the 30, 30, uh, 34, 35 uh, participants uh, right now uh, in the uh, call, right? Assuming you all have an idea. So the next question is like, uh, how we can uh, make it into a startup which can be successful. So this is the context. So starting with the pre-incubation, right? Um, so this is basically a three chapter thing. Uh, one is pre-incubation, second is uh, incubation, and third is like entrepreneurship as a career. So this is how I break it down. So when it comes to pre-incubation, what does that mean? Um, because earlier, like say five ten years back right all these incubators uh, they used to incubate idea stage now also a lot of startups or incubators does that uh, but basically the definition of incubation kind of uh, changed uh, over a period of time um, so whatever we thought say i have an idea i come to an incubator and you got as a product right that's what we normally say talk about a startup incubator uh, but there is now a, a thing called pre-incubation. So whatever we thought uh, like incubation area, now we are calling it as pre-incubation. So let's, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper into this whole um, pre-incubation uh, concept, right? Say I have an idea. So what's the first thing uh, you tend to do when you have an idea, right? Um, so normally when we uh, interacting with all these uh, tech savvy people, so what they do is like if the moment they have an idea for an Android or iOS app or to build a website, they just go and build something. And the biggest issue with that kind of uh, execution is uh, they don't know whether the market actually needs it or not. Uh, they don't, you know, when someone got an idea, like uh, they tend to uh, talk about what you call, uh, okay, I know that this idea works, people need this. This is what normally uh, all the entrepreneurs or tech related entrepreneurs say the issue with that is like uh, they build a product with spending a lot of time i know a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who worked like two years three years building a product the moment they are out into the market um, no one wants it and uh, there's a statistics that 90 95 percentage of startups fail uh, any given of period in history only five percentage make it big now uh, maybe another five percentage will make it break even the reason why i mean what as pattern what we noticed why this much of huge rate of failure 
is because people are not building or innovators are not building something that uh, market needs or market wants basically so this is where the pre-incubation comes so for example uh, i i heard that this is your last day in your uh, college if i'm not wrong with uh, something like that the semester or something right or end of your course so assuming you are uh, you chose entrepreneurship as a career instead of going for a job um, how to minimize the risk that's what we are trying to look into so um, say you have an idea and the thing is that uh, you feel like okay, let me hire a team of five or ten and uh, some let few people do the sales few people do the uh, building the app and all those things but the real uh, what do you say um, how this really works to minimize risk is basically you don't do all those things you literally don't build a product in the first three months or six months so instead of that Say I have an idea, I have a billion dollar idea, uh, maybe in hospitality industry, let's take uh, uh, hospitality as a, one of the uh, areas, right? What you do is like, you go out and talk to people. So that is kind of uh, one, you know, uh, people will normally have inertia, like, you know, what people say about my idea, or what if they uh, steal my idea, a lot of concerns are there. But uh, as a good practice, um, what you should do is like if you identified a problem to be solved in a hospitality industry, you go and talk to, you know, 30, 50, 100 um, business owners so that you will get an understanding, okay, whether this idea, you know, there's an assumption that, okay, this there's a problem, but you are getting a validation from th uh, all these 30 to 50 um, business owners. Um, and the beauty of doing that is like, you are already in conversation with a bunch of your prospect customers. So they know that you are uh, going to deliver something, a solution, and you don't need to go and do any marketing after that to get your early customers. Since you are already having a conversation with a set of, uh, you know, uh, these people uh, who are your prospect customers. So we normally give a, a timeline of three to six months to validate the idea because having idea is one thing and uh, the painful process is you doing a market research. So you, this you might have uh, known like all this primary and secondary data uh, and uh, market research, right? Secondary is what? Secondary is basically say in hospitality industry, what is the total addressable market? Or like in say in specifically in Goa, how many hospitality industries are there? And what's the business potential to it and all those things right so when it comes to uh, those kind of things you just need to google it you will get uh, a good amount of data you can go to reports uh, you know latest reports and all those things to get a hang of how big the market is the reason why we are looking at how the big the market is because if the market is not big enough even if you come up with an idea the chances for you to scale uh, will be really really less so um, and you put all your effort, why can't you put that effort in a market which is bigger so that you will get a, even if it's a, if it's a trillion dollar uh, market, right? Uh, even if you get a one percentage, it's a good thing than uh, going after a 10 lakhs kind of uh, market and getting a 10 percentage of it. So I'm just giving you an example like that. So make sure that there is enough market for this product uh, before you actually jump into that. That can be done by just sitting at your home and Googling, uh, you know, the industry you're planning to serve, uh, actually got a huge market or not. So this will be your first step. Uh, if you have an idea, this is the first step you should ideally do. Uh, go to Google, just search for, you know, all the resources and understand what's going on in the industry and understand is there any other uh, competition or uh, any other, uh, you know, uh, players already doing this. If yes, try to understand uh, why they are uh, doing it and uh, they, what are their features or you know, why they are successful. Try to dig deeper into it. So all these secondary data can be, uh, you can uh, you know, retrieve or you can get it through or you just Googling by sitting at home. So once you're convinced that, okay, there's enough market, my idea, there is there are a few players. So one of the validation for your idea, whether this works or not, is like, if you have an idea and there are a few competition, exactly doing that solution, that's a good thing. People say that's a bad thing, actually not. It's a good thing because you don't need to uh, think 
a lot or convince a lot uh, with the uh, prospect customers we can because we can always say that you know um, say if i'm um, or you i can say look there are other players also right now doing something similar and we are doing it better kind of thing so it's easy to convince your prospects than uh, starting something from the scratch which is you know which is not there and if you feel that we are the first ones to do something uh, as i told as i started this conversation right 7 billion people on earth and everyone got a minimum or two idea it's not like people never thought of it, about it and still if you're not seeing that solution in market there must be some reasons so you should be worried if no one is actually doing something similar to what you do unless unless it's a tech uh, enabled uh, when i say tech enabled let's say there's a patent or there's like a disruptive innovation otherwise uh, someone or other will be solving that issue uh, something similar to what you're thinking of so always look for that so that is where your secondary data ends so you are convinced there are players uh, there is a market and all those things right so once that is done that is the painful process but compared to say you spend 2 years to build a, a startup without doing this for a 3 to 6 months uh, then it's a waste of your 2 years in your career right so instead of that put that energy uh, even though it's a little bit uncomfortable create a list of your stakeholders if it's in the health industry try to understand which are the associations which are the main players which are the categories category a b c which are the organized uh, you know uh, hotels and restaurants and the those categories and all so create the and create a normally say we do we interview the customers right so uh, we create a script then we go out and talk to these people uh, ask questions and get data so while you're doing that uh, you will understand that uh, okay there is a real real uh, you know really there's a need for it and they might even give you some inputs also telling that if you have a you know solution this uh, or a feature like this in your product that actually helps uh, me as well as lot of uh, uh, you know lot of other companies in my field which you might not thought uh, thought about while you actually get into the uh, you know market so this is very important uh, if anything is important in your uh, startup uh, journey if you're starting up having conversation with your customers and understanding the real problem that tops if you have a top uh, list of 10 uh, top things you should do this is one thing because uh, the reason why a lot of ideas fail again is because it's not because the feature is not good or the technology is not good or anything it's purely because there is no customer to buy it basically so you should really really understand uh, um, whether the customer needs it or not i'm not talking about the outliers like the facebook store amazon in the world which was fairly fairly new uh, when it was there and it was a concept earlier right um, but the point is i'm talking about the 90 95 percentage of startups which is a kind of replica or a better version of the existing solutions so you should definitely talk to customers uh, so that you need to make them one of your team members the customers so that you're building something uh, you have a clarity that okay uh, i am building it for say 50 people who are all, who already need this so they are actually keen you know waiting for a solution uh, we compare it uh, the analogy is like uh, vitamin and painkillers uh, the question is like what are you building are you building a, a painkiller kind of solution or are you building a vitamin vitamin is good to have kind of things even if it's not the uh, people are okay with it but the moment you make uh, you know um, the painkillers um, people need it because it's like a, it's a near of the art everyone desperately looking for something like that so always try to build something like in painkiller category then um, you know good to have because good to have is easy to replace or easy to kick out but painkillers will remain so always when whichever the successful startups you think you just think whether it's a uh, painful uh, you know are they solving a pain or not and the successful ones um, kind of 99 percentage of the solutions are actually solving a pain um, so on that front so once so this is the pre incubation chapter 1 basically um, it's very simple if you look at from you know um, um you don't need to spend a lot of time even if you joined a company or job working somewhere part time also you can come home uh, spend some 2 3 hours 
all you have to do is like you have to research whether the idea is there or not and uh, you know and talk to the customers or talk to them uh, face to face or, or, or call but make sure there is a human intervention it shouldn't be like uh, you collecting data from secondary data and you think that that's enough no you should really talk to the customers because there are enough perks not just uh, you getting feedback but also you might get some new ideas to incorporate and also become your potential customers so uh, as an incubator uh, we always suggest startups who come with an idea with this kind of process only you don't need to join an incubator to do that you only need to know the process how to do this thing so this is where uh, this framework uh, business model canvas uh, come into play so um, I'm just uh, showing, you know, um, you can see this, right? So this is a business model canvas of Netflix. Uh, why this is, uh, why I'm just, I'm showing it as an example, right? The whole idea here is like, a, if you look at the, if you want to go to a bank, right? You know, when you go to a bank, you have to give a detailed report for your business and all those things. You need to put someone else on uh, top of it uh, to actually, write all these five page, 10 page, 30 page kind of uh, detailed project reports and all right, right, business reports. So instead of that in startup world, um, you can fit in everything in one canvas, one sheet, um, and it, it conveys everything. So when you are doing a tech startup, uh, I'm still talking in tech startup perspective, uh, tech startup, you don't need that kind of uh, uh, long reports whatever you did with your market research right primary and secondary that actually allows you to fill this once you fill this someone who actually helps say for example incubator or investors those kind of people they will understand this very easily by looking at the business model cameras whether uh, this makes the idea makes sense or not okay so i will uh, you know i will I will quickly, this will be one piece. There are a lot of other canvases also, say um, Lean Canvas, you know, um, there are a few um, for corporates uh, to uh, ideate. There are a uh, few other uh, canvases out there. But this is like the you know, commonly known, it's not, it doesn't matter which one you're using. I'm just uh, showing one example so that uh, um, you know that something like this exists in the uh, uh, in the startup world, which you can, uh, assuming you don't know, like if you already know, well and good. Uh, assuming uh, the people who doesn't know, uh, uh, all those things are like, uh, my assumption is like you don't know. So if you know it, uh, pardon me, but uh, uh, is a refreshing, uh, you know, refresh your memories kind of thing. But um, there are nine things uh, you want to get out of it after uh, doing your uh, pre incubation stage where you validate your idea. So even though it looks like this doesn't start from here, so it always starts from the right side. So you should know who are your customer segments. That's how it starts. So you write this who are the customer segments uh, in hospitality industry. You, uh, you, you don't say everyone in hospitality industry. No, you might be solving maybe uh, four star, five star hotels, or maybe uh, homestays, or maybe uh, you know adventure sports. So like that, uh, you'll be doing uh, something or other very specific to the uh, audience. So you should clearly define who, who's your customer segment. Mm -hmm. So once you define that, then you go to a value proposition. So what is value proposition? Value proposition is basically, um, you know, USP we call it, unique selling proposition or value proposition is the, this is the one major piece of a startup. So this is what you're going to sell because people come for this. Like the, for example, Netflix is the amount of content uh, you can get and the new content that is coming in and uh, at your home, you can access to all these things and uh, there's no ad uh, into it and all those uh, advertisements are not the uh, cheaper than, you know, going to a, a movie theater. Um, it won't replace the movie experience, but still, you know, it's still, uh, you can have your own, uh, based on your taste, they recommend the uh, new series and all those things. So uh, you define your value prop here. So once you have the customer segments, then you tell, look, for this customer segment, this is the value proposition, okay? Then you should know uh, what are the channels you use to get there and how do you engage the customers, what is it, how the customer relation works. So channels are like the, you know, uh, through App Store, how you can download uh, all those things and uh, 
there will be social media talking about upcoming uh, you know channels and all those things so a lot of things are uh, you know the what you call the new shows coming and so that's how you reach out to your customers telling that look um uh, something new is coming and uh, uh, you have to download the app there was one campaign happened uh, in india uh, like a mobile version or like a free for a day or a week something like that so th these are like all the channels to reach out your customers so then the customer relations is basically uh, you know mostly it's self only like you can download you can have your premium membership and all those things by, done by that but uh, if you need any uh, you know user support and all those things uh, you can reach out to your customer care they will respond and all of those things so that's your customer relations how do you engage with them on a day to day basis so um, this is something uh, you know uh, um, this is where this four elements is something you should start with so when you do this four you will understand what's the revenue you are going to make because once you know this like there will be a pricing and all those things where you can understand okay to make my this 